You're live. Apparently, you're live. Hello, everybody. We'll just wait for a second uh, to make sure that we are indeed live and that you can see and hear us. Um, because, of course, that helps. Always when, helps. When you're doing a live stream, doesn't it? It's always, always. It's always better to be seen and heard. Don't you worry, Hedge. You you go and take care of your business. You go and have a wee wee, love. For a second. I, I had one just before we started. And no doubt I'll have another during. Jess has cut the hair again today, but it now it needs bleaching desperately. Yeah. You're, you need you need a bleach, aren't you? Yeah. Most definitely. Need my roots doing. So it's Sunday in the kitchen with those vegan guys. Sunday afternoon. Cooking. Live. Well, I'm not. Well, I'm helping. Yeah. He'll be helping. Sort of. Anybody who's here uh, joining us for the first time uh, in this uh, wonderful community, this wonderful chat. Oh, yes. Hello. I'm Paul. I'm Jason. And together we are those, those vegan, vegan guys. guys. And this is our merch. Uh, some of it. Uh, Any rose, some of it. Um, yeah. So today uh, I thought it would be because recently I made a potato doufanois. Doufanois. Uh, which I'm sure some of you saw. On there was a snippet of it in a vlog, uh, one of our food vlogs, and pictures on Instagram, of course, when it was finished and everything. But I didn't actually go through the process, and it was it it, it was strange how it. This is how I work in a kitchen. Strange how it came about. So you all know, well, many of you will know that Jess Santa Pearl has been giving us. Uh, it was really tasty, wasn't it? Was it was proper tasty. We even took a little bit up for mum and dad. We did. And they thoroughly enjoyed it so as I'm, well. I'm going to make another one today, dead simple. Um, uh, but I'm also going to do the uh, unmeasured version. Oh, I'm going there. I'm brave me. The unmeasured version of the potato and carrot cheese sauce slash cheese spread, depending on how thin you make it that the vegan queens did on their live recently, because I realised it's something we've never actually done on this channel, and it's a fantastic um, side dish, a really good side dish. And when the vegan queens made it a couple of weeks ago and then said, you know, left us some. Hey, we're, having a, we're having a technical moment. Oh. So a few people saying it's freezing and, and signals bad. So we might just have to pause for a second while it sorts itself out. Although I don't know necessarily that it's a problem on our side. Well, let us go to um, let's go to there and to there, and then we can actually see. Yes, we can't see you lot now because I'm opening YouTube just so that we can keep an eye on the feed on it too. Let's go. To, on the stream. Uh, let's go to there, to there, and then we can actually see. Yes. Right, so turn the volume on now because I'm on YouTube. There we go. It seems to be fine now. Well, we will carry on. Business as usual. Um, it seems okay on our side, but we will keep checking and making sure. But thank you um, for letting us know. Um, it's random. Does this occasionally to anybody and everybody? Oh, that's going to be a rubbish stream, though, isn't it? If it keeps freezing and being ridiculous. Well, let's just let's just see how it goes. It might sort itself out. Should we give a shout out to a few people? Um, before we continue on, because there's quite a lot in the house already, 46 in the house. So I'm going to give a shout out. If I miss anyone, it's not personal. I'm just going to scroll from the top. First in the house, Beverly, Newbie Vegan, our wonderful mods, Kelly, Lauren, are both in the house, and um, Leanne, I think, is in the house. Uh, Anita, uh, Angharad's Life. Frank, Charlotte, us three vegans, Will and Chris, Felicia, Muddy Paws, Newbie Vegan, Hedrad, of course, Angie, uh, Louise, hello Louise, Mr. Atlanta, um, 
Frank, Charlotte, hey, Deb. Frank. Have we got everyone? Sexy Dead Soul Dead. Search. <laughs> Send Bev, it Nikki. Uh, just hang on a second, Jason. Yeah. You, you... Oh, sorry. Yeah. Read as you go, and then we can pick out a question, maybe. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Louise, we uh, did tofu on our last kitchen live stream three weeks ago. The entire thing was all about tofu. Uh, but if you go to our channel and type the word in the search bar at the top, every channel's got a search bar specifically for their channel. Type in tofu. Anything we've ever done with tofu will come up. Scrambled egg, fried egg, egg mayonnaise, all made with tofu. All that jazz. But we did it on the last live, so we won't be talking about it in this one because this is about potatoes and side dishes and stuff you can do with potatoes. Uh, so it was just going to be potato dough and what? But then, like I say, I thought, oh, we might as well do that potato and cheese sauce. Right. I'm just going to scroll down to the bottom again now. Yeah. I think everything's fine. Are we, are, are we stable again now? Is the picture and sound stable? Are we wobbling? Imran says, we're doing burgers, cobets, chips and salad. Nice. Nice indeed. Cobets. Is that some kind of reason, re, regional thing? I think it sorted itself out. Yeah. I think we've also got to accept the fact that it's not always a technical problem on our side. Mm -hmm. Crack on, lads, Lauren says. <laughs> Don't worry, Denise. Denise is late due to a washing machine malfunction. Oh, no. Heather, thanks for joining us. It's okay now. Just buffer for a few seconds every now and then, but it only lasts 10 seconds. Ooh. Little Fair Witch, we have a Halloween-themed quiz planned. For the night before. The night before. The Friday the 30th, I think it is. Yeah, it will be. Morning. Right, first things first, I'm going to uh, start the potatoes and the carrots cooking for the cheese sauce. But what I'm not going to do is specific measurements. I'm not, I'm not going to do specific measurements. I'm just going to do about twice as many potatoes as carrots. I've done that so people can see you. Hi. <laughs> what else do you do in the chopping, you know? So this is where I'm a little bit redundant. Because I'm just here to be a smiling face. If you help. want specific measurements for this, by the way, it is uh, what they say is two cups of potatoes to one cup of carrots, basically. <laughs> a few more people joining us. Uh, Davy Ara Aracusandora. I'm getting better at pronouncing that little by little. Natasha. We're doing good, Natasha. Thank you for asking and hope you are too. Uh, DJ Paul says, have you tried the vegan veg burgers from Heron? No. No, we haven't. Thank you for uh, mentioning. <laughs> it's very true, Imran. Very true. Imran says, we all sort of buffer a bit in life, don't we? <laughs> potatoes and carrots in a pan. About double the amount of potatoes that there are carrots. Do you know, to save time, <coughs> I'm going to boil the kettle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Denise says that uh, you can be the glam assistant for a change, Jason. Mm -hmm. There we go. I'm the glam assistant. Just without the fancy hair and, and the sequins.
Oh, Natasha's just got back from glamping for uh, her anniversary. That's cool. I'm going to cut the potatoes here for the uh, Dufenois. Dun, dun, dun. Strikes fear and dread into many people, myself included. I don't know whether people will want to watch you doing that or whether it'll terrify them. Yeah, I mean, don't, don't do, don't do this at home. People use a Kevlar glove. In fact, I'm about to order one from Amazon. Those potatoes I did last time were so much easier for this. Yeah. Um, yes, please be careful. You know what I'm going to do? Uh, use a dishcloth? Yeah. Yeah. ASMR pillow, thank, <laughs> thank you very much, yeah, of a sort, of a sort, so yeah, if it's a little bit noisy uh, and you're just joining us, it's just because the kettle's on in the background, so that will go off momentarily, Paul is chopping potatoes using the mandolin, and we are making a potato dauphinoise, vegan, obviously, uh, and a few other bits and bobs as we progress through our live this afternoon. <laughs> that's why I, I, i'm gonna move it up i think we're gonna be people are freaking out people don't want anxiety you know our anxiety is bad enough as it is at the moment 2020 is a write-off oh bless you thank you bev buy something tasty for joan with this please loved you guys loved you guys and the joan <laughs> thank you bev bless you uh, i used to have a grippy thing didn't i for yeah, like a, there was like a spike tool. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. Yes, Angie. Yeah, absolutely. What? A, a dubri flip. Yeah. That's the one. A little dubri. A little dubri flip. You didn't see that. Didn't see it. Didn't happen that. Five second rule. Any, uh, we'll, me we'll mention this again at the end as well. And if I can find a way to get the link and share it because i think we can share links right so if matt's already set his life oh yeah 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 uh our friends matt and soph are doing a live music session again tonight at eight o'clock um so if you fancy popping along fabulous we but you know us we will only um shout out um talent um, and Matt and Soph are talent. Um, uh, we know, we've known Matt many, many years. Uh, him and Soph have been performing together as a duo for at least 10 years, 10, 11 years. Um, so, yeah, we'll try and put a link in. Um, but 8 o'clock tonight, YouTube, Matt O'Neill, The Distance, uh, highly recommended. But it's on Matt's channel, isn't it? Matt O'Neill's channel, yeah. So we will try and put a link in. Just uh, go to... Go to there uh -huh. and go to Matt's channel and see if there's one set and then we can, people can easily open the link. And kind of click. I shall have a look right now. It might not be set yet. Uh, I wonder if they're just going live. Maybe. Just Maybe. like at eight o'clock. Yeah. Well, I can do this, can't do that. Uh, I'm gonna cut some of these. Potatoes. After which was it our live tiny bits and then we'll fill the gaps. Was it our last quiz night? We came off we came off doing the la our last live. And, and they were just randomly on YouTube streaming live. Um, and it was the, like their first time sort of dipping the toe in the water of, uh, of live streaming. And as some of you have probably been aware from some of our previous lives, um, live streaming music on YouTube is actually quite difficult um, to, get it, to get it sounding good. But, oh, the harmonies, the singing, beautiful. And very funny as well. Lovely. So I'm going to try and do this now. For anybody that's interested, there you go. That's Match Channel, and that's where they'll be live at about 8 o'clock tonight. If you like beautiful Hannah harmonies and acoustic music, come. We'll be there. Yeah. Join us. We'll chat. And listen, of course. 
Yes, listening, I think, might be the operative thing. Yes, mainly listening. Yeah, I'm going to get one of those Kevlar gloves. Yeah. While you're doing that, and then I don't have to keep doing this, I'll have a little uh, scroll up. Uh, I wonder if I've got enough there. I might Only have you know. would know. I might have. Uh, we've actually been asked, Louise, we've been asked this a few times over the last year or so um, about um, a P.O. box. I almost read it as, how can I send a fan box? Do you have a poo box? Oh. And I was like, oh, that's a very different thing. That's like something a cat might use. Um, <laughs> But no, we don't have a PO box currently. Um, it may be something we will look into in the future, uh, possibly, but not oh, right. We'd have now. to be way bigger than two hundred pound a year. Yeah, we've got to justify that kind of expense, um, and yeah, at the moment we just can't justify it. Two hundred pound a year, like two hundred English pounds a year. I think I'm going to do a shallower one than I did last time. A shallower one. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Last time it was like a pie, wasn't it? Almost. It was It was proper girt. But it was lovely. Really lovely. Right, the mix for the Dauphin Noir. I shall show you it. <laughs> Just laughing at you, Kelly. I know. I didn't want to. Uh, I didn't want to make people nervous. Two level tablespoons of oats. <laughs> two level tablespoons of hemp seeds. Oh no, I'll go two and a half. I'm going to need to order some more hemp seeds. You know. Two and a half, almost three of hemp seeds. But you said before, didn't you? It's it's. Uh... It's, it, there's a little bit of flex there, isn't there? One, two, three, four, nutritional yeast. <laughs> Lauren, girth on a Sunday, <laughs> and Angela is having pucker pies later. Garlic powder. <laughs> King Himalayan salt. What, what's going on here? Salt. What's going on? What's going on? King Himalayan salt and grounded black pepper, Karen. Dencono. Nutritional yeast is amazing on lentils. Of course. Is it amazing in and on everything? Or am I just being typically vegan there and going silly about nutritional yeast? Weird thing is, the first couple of times I had it, I wasn't keen. It's definitely an acquired taste, but I'm sure a lot of people would say that. Plant milk of your choosing. Good two to 300 milliliters. A bit more. Uh, Denise says, um, I have never used hemp seeds. What do they do in this recipe, Paul? Well, they're the fat element. But it's good fats because it's omega 3 and 6. Still a fat, so it's still something you have to watch for. But they're the kind of oil element, really. And so they help to um, emulsify, I suppose. Whereas the oats are the thickener, the thickening agent. that thicken the sauce really well. Fantastic stuff. So just sorry. Oh, I just realised didn't hear that the other now. Is it on now? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Muddy Paws says, made a nut roast today. Did Michelle Lowe had no breadcrumbs, so put in stuffing mix. Turned out okay. Nice. Good, good. 
Yeah, Michelle's become the queen of. I ain't got this, so I'll put that in. <laughs> yeah, without a doubt. Oh, shit. <clears throat> without a doubt. Morrisons are doing their own nooch now, a couple of people have mentioned. Oh, I've just found a. Uh... I've just found a really good company on um, on Amazon. I can't remember what they're called now. I'll tell you because I've just placed an order. Um, I wanted some um, dried black beans. Oh, yeah. For the Instant Pot. So I found this company. And they've got like everything. Dried beans and pulses and nuts and cal and mac and nutritional yeast. They're called um, Whole Food Earth. Whole Food, all one word, and then Earth. And if you search them on Amazon. Oh, oh stupid. It, it's uh, manual focus, isn't it? So just stay focused on our lovely faces. Anyway, a kilogram black bag of dried black beans. Six quid. A Muddy Paw says, I use that company. Good stuff. Oh, good. I'm glad. They looked good. The reviews are really good. That's why I, uh, I chose them. I'll probably try their Nooch at some point and their um, Cal and Mac as well. For the stuff that you just use, like, consistently on a regular yeah, basis. Regularly. Oh, God, coffee I didn't even... Uh, so also, I know that we're cooking stuff today, but I also wanted to have a chat about, um, as we kind of mentioned, you know, the festive time is coming up. Uh, if anyone saw our, um, we did a festive Wellington taste test last year. Uh, first, we remade our festive plat video. Yes. I did a new version. That was really good. But then we did a festive plat kind of taste test from... Sainsbury's, Tesco, and Astor, I think. I'm sure think we had so. three. I think you're right. Yeah, I think But the great. same one that Sainsbury's had last year, which is soy, soy and a mushroom galette or something in puff pastry. They've got again this year, 375. It was gorgeous. Like, it was gorgeous. It was really, really good. Um, but, of course, we always remember recommend using our uh, festive plat, which we actually don't have on Christmas Day. No, but we have it over Christmas. We have it all over Christmas. Um, so we might have it Boxing Day night, warm, with salad, and then we'll have it cold for snacks, lunches. You know when it's like over Christmas, when you say, oh, should we have a plate? When you have a couple of pickles and a few crisps and a sandwich and a bit of... Uh, you know, pork crust pie or something, and a spoonful of piccalilli. We do that quite a lot over Christmas. It's got to be done. So the festive plat is perfect for it. Any road, uh, talking about sides, that's the reason I'm doing the dauphin one today, because actually, as opposed to mashed potato, I think this would make a beautiful side on Christmas dinner. Yeah? Uh, a, a, a bit of potato dauphin one some roast potatoes, and some of the things that I shall discuss with you now that we do every Christmas without fail, and I shall probably do a vlog on, on, on these bits. We do red cabbage with cinnamon and butter. Mm. So you part steam it, slice it very, very thin, your red cabbage. Bet great with a mandolin. We had that salad sliced with the red cabbage in the yeah. uh, last week. Gorgeous. So good. Um, slice your cabbage like really, really thin. Partly steam it. I'm talking for like a minute and a half, two minutes. Then blot it a bit. Then in the frying pan with butter, thick butter obviously, and a sprinkle of cinnamon. One side done. Gorgeous. So nice. So, so nice. I do carrots, partly steam them for about three minutes so that they, because if you put them straight in the orange juice, oh yeah, orange juice. If you put them straight in there, they don't cook proper. So steam them for about three minutes first. Then orange juice and thyme for your carrots. Amazing. And it for some reason, it tastes better with carrot batons than it does with carrot slices. Yes. I don't know why. 
I don't know why. I think that's just a textural thing as well, though, isn't it? Yeah. You know. Sprouts part steam them in halves. Then I put them in the frying pan with fresh sage, butter, and chopped chestnuts. And, and I'm just the lucky lad that gets to sample all the beautiful delights. Um, but yes, uh, Lisa says uh, they are doing a buffet Christmas lunch because everyone likes something different. Nice. Denise says the red cabbage sounds great. Oh, it really is. Yeah, it's not my recipe. It was actually... Um, who were it that? Mentioned it one year and I was like, I'll try that. I think it was Jamie Oliver. Yeah, it might have been. I think it was Jamie Oliver. Yeah. The lovely Bobby is in the house. Mr. Atlanta, thankfully, uh, give her a wake-up call. And uh, she's here to join us. Thank you <laughs> for joining us. Hey, Bobby. Better late than never, lovely lady. And you've not missed much, to be fair. Um, yeah, a few people saying uh, about the, the C word and uh, Christmas... Um, I think uh, Imran, picking up on what Imran was saying before, I think a lot of us probably expected this year to really drag. But for me, and I think a lot of others, or for us and a lot of others, it hasn't really. It's actually gone quite quickly, which is weird. Right. But it's going to be here. It's going to be here before we know it. And I think we all need to have the best festive period we can um, to, to raise our spirits a little bit and, uh, and just feel generally better about things. Going to heat this dolphin wine mix on the stove so it thickens a little bit, so I can pour it over the potatoes hot, and it'll cook quicker in the oven. Nice. <clears throat> nice. <laughs> now, Bobby, we don't want to be having any domestics uh, over the pots in the chat, so uh, you know. Resolve, uh, resolve your dis your differences. We all need somebody to lean on. So, whilst uh, Paul's sorting that out, uh, it would be rude of me to not mention that there's 84 in the house and only 50 thumbs up, thumbs ups. So, if you would. Be so kind as to pop out of the chat for a second, if you haven't already. Uh, if you're enjoying the content, the live stream, give us a thumbs up, please, um, because it's greatly appreciated and it genuinely does help uh, to uh, get us out there with those YouTube robots and the algorithms and all that jazz. Um, always greatly appreciated. You can give us a thumbs down if you want as well. Um, but, you know, that'd be rude, wouldn't it? No. Joking. Right. <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. Oh, we'll have to keep yeah, Thank you, Dancono. Yes. We've got to try and appease the uh, the YouTube robot gods. Thank you, Angie. You're a pro. <laughs> yeah. Funny, funny. Thanks, everyone. That's awesome. How's it all going? Say hello to mum and dad. Oh, of course, yeah. Couple of new uh, people in the house and a couple of people just joining us. Yeah, I'll take a moment to, uh, because um, they can't be in the chat, I'll say a quick hello to mum and dad who always watch our lives. Um, and I'll give a shout out and say hello as well to uh, Auntie Pearl, who uh, I know tries to catch uh, our lives as well, uh, and is also uh, the lovely lady that donates uh, the veg to us from her fancy man. <laughs> Probably shouldn't say that. It's not a fancy man, it's just a man. It's just a, a friend of the family. Right, I promise I'm not going to make the mistake I made last time at the Dauphin War. I'm going to put a squirt of oil into my glass yeah. before I start layering it down so I don't get the bottom slices welded. Good shout. Do you know what I mean? Good shout. <laughs> yeah. ASMR Pillow said, you should create YouTube accounts for your parents. 
they've got a YouTube account. It's just that they watch it on the television in the living room. Yeah, well, we do. A lot of the YouTube we watch, we watch on TV. So unless you've got your phone open as well, do you know what I mean? It's, you can't kind of... You can't really come out. <laughs> the vegan Mujita. What? I'm not late. You're late. <laughs> I beg to differ, good sir. Most the love of music. Oh, bless you. Thank you so much. <laughs> How about 12 supermarket taste tests for the 12 days of Christmas? Oh, oh, imagine that. All that glorious food. That'd be amazing. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. There'll be plenty of taste testing going on, that's for sure. Yes, well said, Bobby. Imran should make Leanna brew a cup of tea because she's modding. <laughs> How's it coming along, babes? It's all right. Yeah? Yeah. I've got to stay here and keep stirring this um, sauce. One, do it so it doesn't get too thick. And two, so it doesn't boil over. This makes sense. Um in, Imran makes an interesting comment, um, which I think you would probably like to weigh in on, Paul. Uh, does anyone else sing the wrong so lyrics to a song? Lee and I were watching Mindhunter on Netflix and there was a Roxy Music song that needed to be redone. Paul often, some of you may be aware, often sings songs and makes them a bit wrong. Songs made wrong by readjusting and replacing lyrics completely on the fly. It's a talent in itself. <laughs> but yeah, I'd say there's nothing wrong with that, Imran. It's great. <laughs> so yeah, what is uh, while Paul is monitoring this uh, this sauce? Um, what's everyone up to this afternoon? What's everybody been up to this weekend? Is uh, anybody? Um, share something nice that you've got up to this weekend, something interesting or something you've got planned for later today, share away in the chat. You never know. You might inspire someone else and they might see that and think, oh, that's a good idea. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Uh... Leanne, we'll be getting on the karaoke when you visit us next, P&J. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Hedge, uh, Lauren, I've been for a run and been to the beach today. It's proper nice here today. Oh, that sounds lovely, Lauren. That sounds proper lovely. And uh, Muddy Paws just started the new Star Trek on Netflix. Yeah, so you mentioned it before, didn't you? Yeah, so good. Watched the first episode. Um... Night before last? Cried like babies. Yeah, definitely. At the end, it got us, didn't it, at the end? Cried like babies. Yeah, that... Um, obviously, we do fully appreciate not everybody in the chat is a, is a Star Trek fan, so I'm not going to go into uh, full-on Trek mode, um, but that particular episode was just an excellent start to what I think is going to be a brilliant new season of Star Trek Discovery. Uh, Newbie Vegan says, guys, have you got your own nut loaf recipe? I'm not aware we've got our own nut roast recipe. No, we haven't. No, we haven't. It's not something we really eat a lot of. I think that's fair to say. Uh, Dencono, painting the outdoor fence, trying to stay sane. Yes, absolutely. Let's see what a few other people have been doing. <laughs> The vegan Wujita, I'm going to spend my day trying my best. And that is all you can do. That is all you can do. And Kelly's had a decorating free weekend. Good for you, Kelly. You deserve it. Absolutely. Yes. Angie's built a desk, tidied the bedroom after said desk building. Brilliant. Will and Chris, my sister's just been induced. A new baby will be here soon, hopefully. Woo! Congratulations. Excellent stuff. Oh, nice one, Denise. Denise has just um, finished watching Tales from the Loop. Superb. Yes. 
one of the one of the my favorite things that I've watched this year so far. Tales from the Loop. Oh, we started watching a new seat. Right, that's thick enough now to be because that'll really thicken. Yeah, yeah. I'll just turn the camera down a little, mm -hmm. a little sec. It's just at this kind of viscosity now. It's not too thick. But as it cools, it will get thicker. As it cooks more now, it will get thicker. So we can start layering. Ooh, word for the day, viscosity. Ooh, I'm going to spray with oil. The should, I, of the... should I do that for now? So yeah. So people can see. Yeah. And we're just going to... Layer our tatties in here. It's a time-consuming job, but honestly, it's so worth it. I'm sure some people will be like, just make mash. And I've done with it. And you'd, be, you, and you'd have every right to think that. Absolutely. You'd, you'd be wrong, though. <laughs> um, just continuing on whilst you're doing the layering, because some of these... Um, some of these things people are sharing are really nice. Uh, Stephen said, uh, Lisa and I celebrated our fifth anniversary this weekend. Loads of love to vegan leftover Thai food for supper. Hope you guys are well. Well, congratulations on your fifth anniversary, Lisa and Stephen. That's awesome. Give your sauce a stir before every pour so that all the bits are all mixed in right. And then just a layer of sauce. It's a bit like a lasagna. Except there's no meat and no pasta. I tell you what, it smells. It smells lovely. In layering techniques, though, it's, that's what I mean when I say it's like a lasagna. Uh, yeah, we started watching a new series last night. Uh, we watched the first episode recommended by our lovely friend Kate in Yelvertoft called Utopia. Oh, yes. On Amazon. And that looks very interesting. First episode, we were hooked straight away. Yeah. It's um, it's it's a very interesting concept. And the first episode is like, bloody hell, already? You know what I mean? It's Yeah. Yeah, I think it is. It's one of those se series that gets you hooked right from the start. If you don't want a creamy sauce with a dauphinois, by the way, you can do exactly the same process with just stock. Just lay your potatoes and then pour stock over and then cook them in the oven. Awesome. <laughs> ASMR pillow says put vegan cheese in, question mark, question mark. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you could do. Put some grated cheese in every other layer. You'd get a, a nice cheesy dauphinois then. But this is me trying to veganise a kind of classic. Classic one. Yeah. Yeah. A classic dolphin wow, which would be, you know, a kind of creamy sauce. Denise says um, uh, Utopia is on her prime watch list. Yes. Very, it's, it's very good. Very good. What we've seen of it so far, I'm like, okay, I'm impressed. Show me more. It's kind of weird how it links in as well with... Um, with today, with life, need to do these other two potatoes that I saved. I'm going to bring this back up here. Yeah, don't freak people out. And do that. Like, please, 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 no. Oh, well, you know what? A few people have already mentioned it. Little Fair Witch, um, sad news, um, got dumped Friday, so eating her body weight in vegan ice cream and keeping myself entertained. And why not? Why not? You do that. You do that. And sorry about that. But you know what? Onwards and upwards to bigger and brighter things. Probably not the best thing to say with it being so, so soon. Um, but yeah, uh, you do you. Absolutely. Oh, the chat is thick and fast this afternoon. Is it? Yes, it well, is. Well, that's a really good thing. Matt O'Neill is in the house. Just talking about you before, good sir. We've already put a link in the comments to your channel so people can tune in at 8 o'clock this evening for some fine, fine sounds. Oh. Davey says, we're always so far behind due to lag, but we took our daughter to pick pumpkins for the first time today. 
Oh, that's nice. Harmony Riley, thank you for joining us. Hey, hey. I'm going to bring this back down just so you can see the finishing touches. I, I might have to peel another potato or two. It's, look how much room there is. You did say you was going to make it shallower, though, didn't you? No, I'm, yeah, but this is a, sh a shallower pot ah, than the other one anyway. Right, see, I didn't even realise that. Yeah, it's not got nearly as much... Um, Oh, Nikki, you know what? Remind us about that later when we've got most of the cooking done and dusted and we'll talk about that briefly before we wrap up later on. Nikki says, "Did do you watch Haunting of uh, House Bly, new to Netflix? We've watched it. We shall talk about it later and give you our honest opinions. Yeah, I think a lot of people have seen the, uh, quite a few people in the comments talking about Flora. Um, I think quite a few people have seen the latest news that uh, Flora Buttery um, will be taking a back step um, and will not be uh, vegan, which is sad. It's very sad. Yeah, they've, uh, somebody mentioned a, a, a kind of a strange possibility that because there's been such a decline in the dairy industry, they've perhaps got a really um, good deal on buttermilk. Yeah. Because it was all going to be discarded because no one's buying it anymore. And they were like, all right, we can make a fortune. Uh, I suppose it depends when you bought it, Denise. You might be all right. I don't think it's like something that's happened like, I think it's something that's happening or has just happened. Yeah, it's from next week, I think. Right. It'll say clearly on the pack it won't say vegan anymore. Yeah, it'll be very clear, won't it? Yeah. I mean, that's the one thing Flora have said is the, um, the kind of packaging and labelling will be very, very clear. So, you know, obviously we hope people don't uh, make the mistake i don't think they will the vegan community the one thing the vegan community is very good at is letting everybody else know when something's going on or something's going down <laughs> oh leanne i think if i'm picking up picking that up right i'm assuming you bought four on friday you bought four four flora buttery on friday whilst they're still vegan i'm guessing for baking I think the all, um, Limby says any good alternatives to flora. I mean, obviously, the rest of the flora range is vegan, so it's personal choice, personal preference in terms of when you, whether you want to carry on buying it. Well, and let's not forget, they have brought out two plant-based blocks, salted and unsalted. Yeah. They're not going anywhere. That is true. Um, but that I can also appreciate and understand that some people might want to just boycott them just for taking that backward step. Um, and if that's your choice, then that's fair enough as well. I suppose the 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 oldest and probably the most well established, um, a lot of people would say Vitalite. Um, it's been around such a long time, uh, and it's always been uh, it's always been vegan, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, it's sunflower spread. Yeah, it's always been dairy free. What's made with pure sunflower oil and has a taste that'll make you bright? Ooh, vital light. Right. Okay. I've done more taters. Stage two. I just didn't want to waste. Yeah. Any, any of, any, any of, any of this. Oh. Really? Sorry. Oh, dear. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Somebody needs to come up with a webcam that actually fixes to the top of your laptop properly rather than just precariously. I tell you what, obviously, I know, I know this is such a, a obvious thing to say and I say it a lot, but it smells gorgeous. Mm -hmm. It really does smell lovely. Is this sauce? It's the sauce, yeah, it's beautiful. The vegan Wajita. The camera is rebelling. I'm uh, offended and upset at what it just did. And it best not do it again. 
I would be so mad if it does it again. I would be so mad. So, so mad. <laughs> Nobody even wants to know how mad I'd be. Yeah, quite a few people have said Vitalite is their go-to. Great minds, Matt. Great minds. Right. Uh, Stacy says, would that sauce do for a pasta dish? Yes, that's how I came up with the idea for it. I made a pasta dish. Um, if you look for our creamy carbonara style sauce video, uh, you'll see that um, that's where this idea started. And that was a beautiful uh, pasta sauce. We had Viviera bacon bits oh, with it. So good. Oh, yeah. This is like the perfect amount. Thankfully. Amazing. Oh, wow. Paul Hutchinson says 13,487 have signed the petition Re Flora. Well, there you go. There you go. Well, kind of when I read the update on the website, here's the thing. This is me. This is the, the, the empath in me and the, and the person who always kind of tries to find the middle ground. When I read the update on the website, my immediate thought wasn't to chastise and have a massive go at Flora. Although I do feel like it is a backstep on their part. They've done so much uh, initially kind of making the whole, the whole range vegan and sort of shouting from the rooftops about it and taking that stance. I don't feel like they deserve to be absolutely slammed for this. I'm putting this straight in the oven now. Oof. Oh, suits you, sir. Oh, yes, lovely. But yeah, that's, sorry, that's that oh. getting sidetracked with the, uh, the, the gorgeous food. Um, I think that's just me in general. I just think... Um, it's a shame, but like Paul said, I think this probably, it's often related to this, isn't it? Related to this, and that is probably what it is, sadly. Abba sang about it years ago. They did. They did. So I say thank you for the music, the songs I'm singing. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, Will and Chris picked up This Isn't Bacon after your taste test. Really was a game changer. Isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. Um, Mum and Dad have tried it as well. They love it also. It's kind of like it's their new thing. They're absolutely... That and the Richmond sausages. I think Dad was a bit disappointed this week because uh, they were sold out of Richmond sausages at Sainsbury's. So, uh, sadly, couldn't get any uh, any of those. But, yeah. Brilliant stuff. Right. Guess a good point, Kelly. I often think that myself. Kelly says, I bet most people wouldn't have been able to tell it was no longer vegan if it hadn't been advertised. I think you've got a really good point there. I think people just complain. There's a, there's a select amount of the population. You could blindfold them, do a taste test. They wouldn't be able to tell the difference. You tell them it's vegan, they'd still complain just because it's vegan. You know, escaping carrot. Yeah, it does, Denise. It does. Yeah. Right, done with the oats. Oh, Denise, bless you. Thank you so much. Super chat. Thanks for being you and a lovely dancing pair. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Thank you so much. Bless you. That means a lot. Thank you. Oh, yes, Sainsbury's are doing, uh, Kelly says Sainsbury's are doing a cranberry and Wensleydale style cheese for Christmas. I need that on my vegan cheese board. Yeah. Yes. Isn't, don't they do that? Oh, no, they do a caramelised onion one, though. Did you say Sainsbury's? Yeah. Yeah, they do a caramelised onion. Cheddar? I think so. It's yeah. very nice. We noticed a little cheese selection box in there the other day. There were three in worth. Four. There. Oh, what? Yeah, there was Applewood four. vegan. Yeah, Applewood Mexicana, Applewood Smoked. Yeah. Then two others. It's two different cheese companies in one box. Yes. Um, and the other one, I don't know what the last one was, but the other one was blue 
was a blue style. Blue style. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Interesting. Stacey says, I like the vegan corn ham fried for a bacon substitute. Yes. Um, you might want to tilt the camera slightly and come and stand with me to tilt the camera slightly this way now so that we can do the potato and cheese sauce. Well, should I do that? That's that's kind of perfect, isn't it? Yeah. Is it? Yeah, go a bit. can do that either. Hiya! Yeah. <laughs> You might have to shout a bit more because you're further away from Mike. Um, potatoes and carrots in in the in the food processor. I'm going to throw a little bit of oil in, a bit of water, a good sprinkle of nooch. That's I finish off that tub. Yeah. Good sprinkle of nooch. Can you pass me that half a lemon? Jays. Then... Throw it in the. Oh, well, I'll cut me another half then. Garlic powder. As much as you want, or as little as you want. Look at me! I'm in the kitchen doing something. Quite a bit of garlic powder for us, Jason. Yes. Some onion powder. And the juice of half a lemon. But you know what I might do as well? Was the um there she is. the lemon squeezer. Um I might, Jason. Yes. To make it a little bit more cheesier. -er. Cheesier. -er -er. I might just put uh, a, a, just under a tit. Tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. Oh. If you didn't hear that, did you say a tablespoon? Just under a tablespoon. Just under a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. There you go. And it's Brex. <laughs> yeah, Lauren, well spotted. I was really struggling with that lemon. I had one task today. One task in the kitchen was to chop a lemon in half. And it took me at least 30 seconds longer than it should have done. And you can do this in a, with an immersion blender in a bowl or something. Not with a mixer. With a blender. Blender. Leave that for a good minute. And it all becomes one colour. <laughs> oh, Imran. Imran says, who's Blender? Oh, Imran. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. It's my thing. Uh, Will and Chris, yes. Yes, it is. Will and Chris says, is this the same sauce the vegan queens did the other week? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to read your comments whilst this is going on in the background. There you go. Nice. All right. <laughs> Will and Chris says, uh, nice to see you sharing recipes. Oh, this camera. Yeah. It's okay. This is the cheese sauce from potato and carrot. Oh. It goes absolutely beautiful with pasta. We've already had it with um, fusilli pasta, bacon bits and peas. And then if you leave it in the fridge, it goes a bit harder like a cheese spread. Uh, we had it the other day, didn't we, Jason? On a, we had a wrap with this on and spinach and some applewood smoked cheese. Folded over and then pan fried dry. It's beautiful. So, so good. I'm not exaggerating. So good. But I think, to be honest... 
Oh, it's good. It's really good. Do you think that vinegar's made a difference? Yeah, it's, it's given added it. another little sharp. Yeah, there's an ad added dimension there that wasn't there previously. Yeah. So you've actually improved on the Vegan Queen's version. Close there. <laughs> v for vegans is in the house. Do not worry. You are better late than never being here. I always say that. Thank you for joining us. Seriously. Well, the chat's still thick and fast. This is gorgeous. Yes, there you are. Oh, why don't you try it with a chin, Jay? Let everyone know how good it is. Well, I go and get rid of this. Okay. I'm going to, oh, I'll sorry. Not be long, I promise you. I'm going to perch. Just get in with a bit of tater peelings. Throw your tater peelings in the compost. Okay. Gives me a chance to just have a little sample. Aldi, vegan cheese tortilla chips. I'm sure people are aware of these. Pretty good. Oh yeah. I think it needs more nooch. Um No, I think it could handle more nooch. I don't think it needs it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this is the hardest part of the whole process, isn't it? Without a doubt. The testing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do it. Do it, Lisa. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, we've got um, Muddy Paws. There's Papa Jalapeno on that, Jason. We've actually got some in the, in the garden that we need to harvest very soon. I'll try one. Mm, it's gorgeous. Chip. Proper nice. Chip and cheese. Down the hatch. <laughs> Yes, thank you, Kelly. Yeah, give us a like. Down to Earth Veganism on the reg. The channel's growing, and it's wonderful that it's growing, and all you people are helping the channel to continue to grow, to consistently grow, and the big one we're aiming for now is 10K. Matt, before you go, set your live before you do it. You can actually set it and do the time, so it comes up as a video. We can share the link beforehand. That. We went to your channel and I had a look before and it's not there yet, is it? <laughs> but you can set it for 8pm. 8, 8 um, that's random. That's a what random one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're kind of in a funny position again now, aren't we? I've got uh, some random person in the comments says green called Green Day 2021. And they've come on and just put Green Day. Fair enough. Completely off topic, but hey, her. Thankfully, we love green day. Um, it's probably needs to be about. Oh no, it's okay. this. It's this that's yeah gone peculiar. There we go. Back to normal. Oh, you see, you've, you've put these away now. Oh, you can have some more if you want. Cheese sauce from carrots and taters. So, yeah, we've tried it. We've had it with um, fusilli pasta, uh, Vivira bacon bits and peas, and it was delicious, wasn't it? Yeah. Featuring one of our... Oh, we do a vlog every couple of days with the, the last few evenings meals on. Well, that's the great thing about this. It's incredibly versatile. Yeah, and then it solidifies a bit in the fridge. So you can use it like a spread. It's nice. It is. Good stuff, and it's nutritious. Because there's not that much oil in it, really. There's a nickel bit. Ah, Ma Mattia. Mattia, sorry, I just popped into the stream. The sauce is to make potato dauphinois. That's a separate thing. No, this is a cheese sauce made from potatoes and carrots that you can use as a pasta sauce or a dip or a cheese spread. Or you could even make a lasagna with this, I reckon. Using it as the white sauce. 
last one. Mm. Oh, I like that, don't you? What were you talking about last time you made this? About the nachos? Oh, yeah. I said, I think this would be really good if you just put a, piled a load of nachos on a plate. Made a spicy soya mince mix with peppers and, you know, onions and stuff. And lots of chilli in there. Dolloped it all over. Dolloped this cheese sauce all over. Get some vegan sour cream. Dollop that all over. And some fresh sliced jalapenos. Well, pickled sliced jalapenos. Mm -hmm. Nacho plate. Sit and watch it. Oh, it'd be delicious. Don't you worry. Mm. When it happens... It mm, will be documented. We will show you. Because I'm quite looking forward to that. Definitely. So, <laughs> um, we can... Take a few minutes to catch up on some of the chat. Um, is now a good time for us to vent briefly about the haunting of Bly Manor? Without spoiling for anybody. Let, well, then, that's very difficult to do. Let's just say it was very slow. It was quite complex. It was a little bit confusing sometimes. And the last two episodes... Just, just saved it for us. On how many episodes was it? Eight, eight or nine? By nine. The, by the time we got to the end of episode seven, there were two left. I said, I'm not bothered about carrying on, Jason. To be honest with you, I'm done investing my time in this. Which it was is very funny. rare for me. There was a spare thing. Jay was like, No, no, we're going to finish. We're going to see this through to its conclusion. We've committed to it. We're going to. And then I was glad I watched the last two episodes because I was like, oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I think there was probably um, a couple of at least one or two slightly dodgy casting choices as well, if I'm honest. Um, Bobby said, The Haunting of Bly Manor, I've given a three out of five. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's probably a little bit generous. Yeah. It was okay, though. No, it, it's not crap. By any means. Deb says, taking you in the kitchen as I need some applewood on toast now. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed a few people in the comments earlier had, had said, like, I think, like, quite a few people have OD'd on applewood smoked cheese. They've eaten so much of it, they've got to a point where they're like, I can't possibly eat any more of it for at least a few months now. What shall I do with this cheese sauce now? I need to put it in something, really. You know, in something. Oh, Will and Chris, yes. Did you see The Haunting of Hill House? Think it was the series before. Really enjoyed it, but not started Bly. I remember The Haunting of Hill House being much better. It was. Than Bly. I'll tell you who is very good in it, although it doesn't surprise me. And oh, I'm... if you do start watching Bly Manor, by the way. No, trust me, this will help you. The strange woman that starts telling the story at the beginning of it all is... The gardener in the story. I'm sure the creators no, of the show will be happy that you've told people that. It needs it. it <laughs> that, that would have really helped me to know that. Because I was just like, who's she? What's she on about? <laughs> uh, Muddy Paws, thank you so much. Paul, oh, which of the two sauces would be best for collard cheese, this one? I think this one. And I think... If you mixed some grated vegan mozzarella into this, so you got a bit of that stringiness. Oof. Oof. Oh, yeah. Uh, Anita, yeah, absolutely. Anita said, not watched the last two episodes yet. I do want to finish it, but it's hard going at the mm -hmm. moment. Worth watching the last two episodes. Last two episodes will make up for it. Yeah. Just. <laughs> Imran says, the accents were like someone bought an accent cauldron and threw in a pot of Bayek, icky thump, <laughs> by job and by job at the same time and fed it to the actors yeah yeah, yeah. so true oh. each time Flora said perfectly splendid it grated on me haha <laughs> so annoying <laughs> yeah it's personal preference isn't it it's not going to uh, it's not going to float everyone's boat Flora and her brother were like as as if so. I said this on like episode 2 I was like it's like they've took the young lad from Damien and an offshoot character from Mary Poppins and banged them together in this manner. 
It's we didn't love it, did we? It's average, and I'll say no more about it. But the first episode of Utopia was great, and it's already got me hooked. And I'm like, ooh, mm-hmm. oh hello, yeah, oh hello, oh hello, yeah, yeah. It's gonna be. It's I'm ninety nine percent. It's gonna be an absolutely awesome series. Yeah. So what else? What else are we doing? Is this done? Is this are we done for this, as far as the cooking now? Yeah, did yeah. Until we get the potato dough from Wiles out, of course, uh, and we we can let people have a look at that. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to share how easy it was to make a dough from Wiles. And here's the rub: you don't have to use the oats necessarily. You don't have to use the nooch. You don't have to use the um, hemp seeds. You could just make a stock and. Uh, you know, a vegetable stock and pour that over your piled sliced potato and it'd cook just as well. Uh, it would just taste very different. We like the creamy. Yes. Yeah. Of it, don't we? A bit more but I think I might do this for Christmas Day, Jason, instead of mash. Yeah. I always do a pile of mash on Christmas Day. I do roasted potatoes with uh, rosemary. I do my carrots with orange juice and thyme, like I said earlier. I do my red cabbage with butter and cinnamon. I do my sprouts with fresh sage, butter and chestnuts. That's pretty much it. And I, I just use a packet of stuffing because Sainsbury's has got loads and they're all not vegan. Mm. So I have a different one every year because you're not keen, are you? Never have been. And then the other bit of the stuffing I'll make a festive plat with. Check out our festive plat recipe video. Just type it in our channel. Oh. Oh, you will be surprised. It's basically a Christmas dinner in puff pastry. I can cope with it. I can cope with the stuffing in the festive plat. Yes, you can. Just about. Um, Kelly says, how long do the potatoes take in the oven? Uh, about 40, 45 minutes, really. Um, because, of course, you want them cooked all the way through. And what some people would do, I know that we try to discourage the use of things like foil, I'm one of them, if you can use a piece, I use my paper several times. I'm pretty gross. <laughs> John Ross. John, I, if you have just joined us, um, thanks for being here, as always. If you've been here a while, I'm sorry if I missed you. He says, have I missed the aperitifs? Did Paul just mention roasting his chestnut? I did. I love a roasted chestnut with a sprout. Yeah, John Ross in the house. Lovely that so many people have joined us this afternoon. Um, our Cooking in the Kitchen lives seem to be very, very popular. So obviously we're going to carry on doing them. Le Leanne, a lot of people do that, don't they? I know that stuffing used to be made with sausage meat. And I've never had a stuffing with meat in because I just like stuffing. Yeah. I like stuffing boys. Stuffing <laughs> and butter on a boy. I don't even need any fake meat around. Just stuffing. I'm happy as Larry. No. Jessica's just joined us. Jessica, you are incredibly late, to be fair, but we will forgive you. For a very important day, Jessica. You've joined us um, when most of the cooking is done and dusted, but, but, and here's an important point, the potato dauphin white is in the oven and it will be coming out at some point, so you get to see the delightful finished product displayed for all. Now, you lot, uh, like I said, last year we did that, um, we did that, uh, the taste test of um, ready-made plats or ready-made Wellingtons from the supermarkets. Would you like us to do it again this year? Should we do a taste test? Should our next mukbang, which is next Saturday, be festive stuff that you can heat and eat? Let us know what you think. Because obviously there's a whole bunch of stuff we can do for a mukbang. And um, those that are in the chat that have never seen one of our live mukbangs, what we've done previously has been Chinese platter, ma uh, budget pizza taste test. What was the other one we did? Mediterranean inspired. Mm -hmm. um, and it's always a delight for me and us. <laughs> But especially me, because I get to absolutely stuff my face. And it's a delight for me as well, if we do something where we're just trying stuff, heat and eat. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No major cooking. Nice things. and easy. Easy like Sunday morning. Yeah, Frank says, ooh, festive heat and eat for next book mukbang. Sounds sounds good. Good. Quite a few people are into that idea, Paul. Yes, festive taste test would be good, Denise says. Well, it's like a two-in-one, isn't it? We get to see the stuff our faces. We get to be really honest about the bits that are kind of available. Because I'd like to try that as the chicken-style roast thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'd like to try a couple of the pastries that are available. It just means um, travelling around to a few supermarkets, really. Yeah, but which we do that. Anyway. And we're quite lucky we've got quite a few within, like, a mile and a half of us, haven't we? We have. We've got the main ones within a mile and a half of us. As The to... only thing that's not near us, like, anywhere near us, is Waitrose. Yeah. I don't even know where there is one. Um, there's a small one in, I think, central Manchester somewhere, but it's, like, probably nine, ten mile away. Right. So, yeah. To my knowledge, anyway, unless I'm mistaken. If anybody is in the Greater Manchester area... And you know where there's a Waitrose, let us know. We could just Google it, but we're here. We're right here right now, and you might know. You might be able to <laughs> let us know in the comments right now. Uh, Mattia says, it's an interesting one, really interesting one, but I think it'd be tricky, not impossible. What about an exotic fruit and rare fruit to mukbang? Mm. It might be tricky because, you know, we live up north, um, and although our supermarkets and our local markets have got some good selections, I don't know if it'd be interesting enough, enough to warrant doing a mukbang exclusively on that, only that subject. So, 50-50 on that one. Besides, we're not whole food plant-based uh, eaters. Uh, I mean, uh, I think that would be, that'd be somewhat like Freely the Banana Girl would do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know, on on <clears throat> her channel. We're about down to earth veganism never forget that when if you come up with ideas for us is it down to earth will it be accessible to everybody is it affordable achievable and if it's not we probably won't do it yeah and that's no that's not any offense to any of that stuff it's just that we market ourselves to people who are uh, who are working class i suppose not like Oh, we're only for working class people, but that that I work because we're working class ourselves. We're we're working class. We're in a certain pay bracket. We're supermarket shoppers, and, and so we we always try to keep that in mind when we're trying to help other people. Yeah, I think we keep it in mind. It's not by design. It's not intentional. But we, right from the start, have wanted to maintain that down to earth veganism approach. Um, and I think in doing so, uh, well, no, I think I know for a fact in doing so, we've helped um, a lot of people uh, transition to to become vegan uh, and establish vegans as well on, the, on their journey in terms of, you know, just being realistic and down to earth with what you can achieve, um, helping to remove some of those barriers in terms of what people perceive life as a vegan is like versus what the reality is. Um, and yeah, we kind of joked about it before, you know, we don't have to go and find the local forest with the waterfall and go and gather our fruit from under the waterfall and wash our hair organically at the same time, naked, All of course. Although that would be very nice. That would be nice, <laughs> but it's not what this channel's about. And we don't live anywhere near a waterfall, sadly, sadly. Yeah. But yeah, um, I think somebody mentioned before, Lorna said, I think there's a big waitrose in Altrincham. Um, X Mill lived across the road from it. Okay, well that's very far away. Well, it's pretty far away from us. Yeah, it is pretty far away from us, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, I'm sure there's ones closer. To be fair, I'm just seeing if anybody else has mentioned anything about Waitrose. Bye, newbie vegan. Hi, GVG. <laughs> Yeah, none of us have any idea, do we, Andrew, and all said and done? Um, About what? What it's actually going to be like over the festive period for people, you know. No, because we're still on the, uh, Manchester's on the cusp of going into tier three. It's just that Andy Burnham is um, putting his foot down and saying no. Because basically, London is ordering Manchester to go into tier three. When London's only in tier two, it's like, well, okay then, pay for that. Pay for all the businesses that are going to lose money for the local economy before you order us to shut down or do it nationally. Make it national so that everyone has to do it at the same time. 
And there you go. And then fund that. Yeah. Denise says, nowhere trolls round here. It's not posh enough. <laughs> As in the area is not posh enough. And she's probably right. Uh, and yeah, Bobby, just echoing what Bobby just said. Um, she said, I think it'll be quiet over Crimbo, to be honest. Yeah, I think for most people, you know. So stock up your cupboards um, with all your favourite things. Have an indulgent one. Um, because as we said earlier on, and, and, and part of the reason for doing this today is it'll be upon us before we know it. Danny, grumpy vegan granddad, um, I think I think you can go, can't you, um, abroad. There's still people going on holidays all over the shop. If, if, if we could have afforded it, we'd be in Greece now. Yeah. No two ways <clears> about it. We'd be in Catalonia now. Even though they've had a big storm and the island was ravaged, we'd be there. We'd be there. <laughs> Barbara says, do you guys use your fingers to grab the last bits of food from a plate? Very uncouth. Um, yeah, probably. Occasionally. I don't know what's prompted that question, but there you go. Very random question, Barbara, and quite judgmental. <laughs> it has got two exclamation marks after very uncouth, so I'm assuming it was tongue-in-cheek. Uh, Muddy Paws would like a lockdown, then I don't have to see anyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dear me. Uh, pretty... Oh, of course. Yeah, Danny. Uh, Grumpy Vegan Grandad, by the way, who uh, who is also Gilbert Grump, or was on the last episode of um, uh, Vincent Vegan. Uh, yeah, I forgot, you've got to do the two weeks isolation when you get back, haven't you? That's what's stopping it. So it's people that uh, can work from home it's much easier for them to do that, of course, isn't it? Of course, if you're in, uh, if you're in um, Grumpy Vegan and Grandad's world, that would make things very difficult in terms of coming back and having to quarantine. So yeah, totally get that, which is a shame. Josh Guy, how are you doing today, guys? We're doing good. We're we're, we're damn fine. It's yeah. been a lovely live stream on YouTube this afternoon. We always enjoy doing our live streams, and we always appreciate. Uh, people in the community coming along, chatting, sharing, asking questions, supporting, all that stuff. But we're doing good. We're doing good. We're staying sane. Just about. Yeah, SMR Pillow said, introverts enjoy a good lockdown. Could need a bit longer in the oven than that. Yeah. Just a little bit. Should I put this in a Tupperware uh, pot? That might be nice. Yeah. Whilst yeah. you, where's the, where's the, where's the one that's slightly bigger than this one? But it's the same quality. Have I put it in the freezer with something in it, or have, is it in the fridge with something in it? That one? No, not that one. That's my hummus. No, that's not in there. I mean, by the way, the um. Oh, you know what I bought the black beans for, don't you? For the instant pot. Because the uh, the cooking of the... Um, the cooking of the uh, chickpeas in the instant pot. Game changer. Absolute game changer. There is a vlog, if you didn't see it, uh, where I cooked from dry um, one cup of chickpeas in the instant pot um but i did what they call the quick soak where you soak them in boiling water for an hour i did that and then i cooked them for 40 minutes on high pressure natural release took them out they were absolutely beautiful perfect chickpeas perfect i put a stock cube in with them so that they got a bit of flavor infused and then i made um what did I make? Others. Oh, oh and tuna style spread. Oh, yes. Which, yes. when mixed with mayonnaise, was incredible. It was, it was incredible. It was such good stuff. Even you loved it, didn't you? It was really nice. Have you yeah. took the blade out? Yeah. Oh. Well, yeah. It, it fell out. I forgot that it actually is removable. But I've not made a mess. Oh good. I just don't want to waste any of this, so I'm spatulaing it out. There 
There we go. What you don't get to see is the amount of pots I've got to deal with. Oh, the joy. Yeah, uh, GVG, there's, um, there is a, a recipe for um, Noe Craig, where his mum did spaghetti, and, uh, well, pasta and meatballs in the Instant Pot. Um, I think it's, uh, I think it's one of their, one of his best recipe videos. It's completely changed what he does now, though, uh, and you should have to, you should check him out, Noe Craig, and his new camping vlogs. Oh, they're so lovely to watch. Oh, yeah, it's like therapy, mm, isn't it? Very relaxing. Should I bite this in the fridge, then? Uh, my partner's taking me away for a few nights, but it's a total surprise for me. No idea where we're going. Hope there's no more lockdowns before we go. Mm. Are you two planning any more days out? Yeah. Uh, not too many now. The kind of weather's changing. Um, oh, we want, a, we want a thingy. Do y'all want to club together and buy us it off our Amazon wish list? What was it called? Oh, a drone. A drone. Yeah. So we can do proper aerial shots. Or aerial shots of the beautiful places we visit. Because we, we've said before, and, and I'll say it again, you know, we're incredibly lucky. And I think one of the main reasons that we live where we live and we've stayed here as long as we have is because we are literally surrounded by beautiful, beautiful countryside. Literally in any direction. Uh, Bobby, have you seen any of Craig's new videos, the, the camping ones? Like Jason said, honestly, they're like therapy. The guy's got such a good eye for a beautiful shot and for the right sounds. And and he does really, yeah, just, it's worth it. It's well worth just checking one of his videos out. You check out one of them, you'll be hooked, I am sure. Yeah, GVG, yeah, I know, you, you need a license to fly a drone now, yeah. But that would not rule me out. Uh, that would not rule out uh, having a drone by any means. I would uh, happily look into the... The new ST Discovery. Oh, we watched it last night. Yeah. We watched the first episode last night. We both cried terribly. I can't find Stones for Ibarra either, John, and it's doing my head in. Because there's another t uh, movie that was um, made for TV, and it was only on TV. And I managed to get that off on DVD on eBay. It's bootleg, obviously, but... I managed. Can't find Stones for Ibarra anywhere, and it's such a beautiful film. I just wish they'd put it back on telly again. Mind you, it's not like it's the old days, is it? Mm. I can't whack a video in a film good take this. I'll just say to Lisa, yes, and I'll say to um, uh, GVG, uh, yes, thank you. What? Uh, Lisa says some kid keeps flying a drone and crashing into a tree, so next time she'll try and rob it for us. Yes, thanks. <laughs> and G GVG says there's a Facebook group. Um, yeah, there's a local guy um, who flies drones up and around uh, dust stones, and he's got a Twitter account, uh, Oldham Drone Guy or Drone Guy or something um, that I follow. So, yeah, I'd, um, I always do the same thing. It was like when we started taking our YouTube channel um, a lot more seriously, and we... Um, emigrated from windows movie maker to actual proper editing software i just went out we went out and we figured out how to do it and it'd be the same with a drone it'd be like okay what do we uh what do we need to do from a legal standpoint to be able to safely fly a drone uh in these uh, beautiful areas that we that we uh, we like to visit but yeah. as paul said before we have got to contend with the changing of the seasons, um, but I don't think that rules anything out because, uh, as I've always said, it's not bad weather, it's just the wrong clothing. Yeah, should I whack this in the fridge? Oh, dear. We've just got to do that so it doesn't turn into... No, not in the fridge yet. No, because no. it's still warm. Oh, okay. You never, you never put things in the fridge until two hours after you've cooked them. There you go. There you go. Even vegan food. Not that it would, like, be necessarily damaging or, you know, become dangerous. It just loses quality. Oh, thanks, Dencona. There, just giving it a rinse, otherwise it's going to weld to it. 
then you'll find it very, very difficult to clean, my dear. Hmm. Oh, Graven's in the house. Thank you for joining us, Graven. Late as always. That's fine. She says, I'm always late. It's okay. It's okay. Although we are uh, rapidly approaching what I suppose many would consider to be the latter stages of our uh, Sunday live The stream. natural end. The natural end, yes. Let's we'll check this um, different one again. Uh, CCFC 147 have tried all the naughty vegan pasties and sausage rolls now. Amazing. Aren't they good? Aren't they good? Like, really good. Somebody asked me the other day because we did a puck pie taste test. So somebody was like, right, I'm going to the supermarket. Which do I buy? Um, naughty vegan or puck pies? And I was like, both. See, the thing is, they're completely different. So in the pucker pies, you've got the minced beef style and the chicken and mushroom style. And then with Naughty Vegan, you've got sausage rolls, cheese and onion and beef style pasta. So they're all dead different. I said, get them all. However, when it comes to price, Naughty Vegan wins, hands down. Yeah, so true. So true. It's just amazing stuff. Um, but many of you will know this. And as uh, Paul just mentioned before, if you don't, if you're, uh, if you're in the chat, if you're in the community today and uh, you've not heard of Naughty Vegan, um, then yeah, check their stuff out because it is really good price point and proper, proper tasty, tasty stuff. <laughs> Muddy Paul says, My tummy is rumbling. Are my tatties ready yet? <laughs> Jason, yes, can you just mind out? Yep, yeah, I absolutely can. John. Don, my loves, still bubbling away, and it will continue to bubble for a short while. Whoa. But that's it. Nice. going to do this. Nice crispy top. Now, nah, we'll bring it round that way. <laughs> well, it matters, the wires. So you've got more white. And then I'm going to see if I can adjust, adjust it. There we go. Show the side. You get all the layers and the creamy sauce, you see, and the crispy top. Oh. Gorgeous. So no doubt we'll be having this for our dinner tonight with something. I don't know what yet, but I'm just going to leave that on the side now to... Um, you know what, actually, I might leave it in the oven as the oven cools. Yes. Yeah, because it won't do it any harm. Just had uh, to sort of cook a bit more and it'll keep it warm for our dinner, Jason. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I just had to make sure that the, uh, the... I keep forgetting the camera, the webcam's manual focus. It's a fantastic webcam. Let me focus there. There we go. <laughs> yeah, it smells gorgeous. It looks gorgeous. It's going to be proper nice later on that. Yeah, I mean, it's got that. It's got that lovely creamy nooch taste. You know, if you make any kind of sauce with nooch, you get that lovely nooch taste. The same with the cheese sauce, except that's far more cheesy yeah. than that. That's more like a creamy, nooch nutty, slightly cheesy. Lisa says, I will have the corner bit. ASMR Pillow says, nom effing nom. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. Atlantis says, and no fingers. <laughs> Which is brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, Dencona. From a distance, it looks like apple strudel. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, please guard the stove as I may jump on a plane to steal <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, ice cream van. Um, we're a bit confused about this because that used to be Mike's van up until last year it was still Mike's van and Mike's music and now it says Caddy's K-A-D-D-Y dash S I don't know whether it's going I don't know whether it's his son not dash S apostrophe S I don't know whether it's his son or whether Mike's just sold the business to this guy Caddy but it was Mike for a lot of years. I know um, when we noticed it originally, one of the things we were saying that certainly in our neck of the woods, I don't know if it's like this everywhere, but um, ice cream people 
that sell ice cream are usually very, very territorial. They can. They can like they, they can. have their patch, their footprint that they've had for years and it is theirs. So, yeah. Drama unfolding in the world of ice cream delivery. Are we in focus? Oh, we might just be slightly out because I did it close up for the... Uh... There we go. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, John E. E. We probably have Will and Chris, but I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah, it rings a bell mm. vaguely. Yeah. Many moons ago. Love Peter K. He's a funny guy. He's just pure bowing. Nowhere. Graven, we don't get ice cream trucks around here. How interesting. I suppose it's a, yeah, it's a strange thing. It's like, there's probably parts of the world where it's not even a thing, like, at all. Oh, we're back to the Waitrose question. Angela says, we have three Waitrose near us. Yes, very posh around here. <laughs> I'd like to go to one. I'd like to do a shopping vlog in a way, Charles. It's just, you know, it'd be massively going out of our way to do that. And we like to focus on the supermarkets that we know most people can access. You know, if you, usually people can access at least one of Sainsbury's, Tesco, Asda, Aldi, Lidl, Morrison's, Iceland. Yes. At least one of those is, you know, we, 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 oh dear. That went very fuzzy then, Jason. Sorry, it's just me being a perfectionist. Very fuzzy. That's better. Yes. So, so is now an appropriate time for questions and answers for our regular Q and A. Yeah. Before we if, wrap things. If up. anybody does have any questions, now would be the excellent time to ask them. We can have a, another chat about um, some some stuff we've watched and enjoyed. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe. There was a film we watched a few nights ago and we were like, well, we watched King Cobra last night. Yeah, it's not, it's not bad. It was all right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's not a particularly nice story that it is telling. Gay porn murder. True story. Yeah. Um, Brent Corrigan. But good acting in it. Christian Slater. James Franco. James Franco. Yeah. Other folk. Very good. CCFC 147, I had some Morrison's V Choc ice cream and it's only 80p a tub. Yes. Yeah, we've had the, um, I think we've tried the vanilla and the chocolate. Um, we liked both. The vanilla had a slight custody taste. The chocolate was like, uh, no offence to Morrison's, cheap chocolate milk. Yeah. It was good though as an ice cream. Yeah. It was, it was that the one that was a bit custody? Was that the, did you just say that? The vanilla one was yeah. custody. Sorry. I was reading at the same time, so sometimes it's difficult to read and listen at the same time um, because obviously there's a few questions coming our way. Oh, um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, Louise says, "What's your favourite music?" Oh, that's too big a question. We could just shout out a few. I think Louise asked before as well if we sing. Yes, we both do. Uh, we actually met in performing arts uh, education. Can you believe that? And Jason was a chorister with Manchester Cathedral Choir for oh, a few yes. years. And for anybody who doesn't know what a chorister is, it's a choir boy. And I'm still a drag queen. A live singing drag queen, not a miming drag queen. Yes. And for anybody who isn't aware, please go on to YouTube after this or stay on YouTube and in the search type in The Vegan Queens and you'll find Paul's alter ego, and our good friend Stuart, uh, his alter ego, uh, in terms of the drag that they're doing. Vegan queens, Gemini and Miles. Yeah. Yeah. Mother well, and daughter. You should all know about this already, of course. Um, Favourite music, Louise? Yeah, we've got really eclectic taste in music. From Nine Inch Nails to Barbra Streisand. And everything else in between. Yes. <clears throat> um, that's the easy answer, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's... I'm very funny with music, me, actually. I, I suppose this is an interesting question, because even though... 
I do like certain people. Like, I'll buy anything Barbra Streisand puts out. Anything, don't matter. She, she could sing the phone book and I'd buy it. And at one time, I was like that with Madonna. Not so much anymore. I've not bought any Madonna music for years. Mm -hmm. But So I've got a lot of Madonna, and I've got loads of Barbra Streisand. And then what I do is I'll just come across a track in something. Like, we're sat watching an episode of... Um, Mr. Robot one night and this song comes on and I'm like, this is amazing. I don't know who this is. And then we buy an album. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's happened quite a lot recently, actually, hasn't it? Yeah. And it's usually your ear for something that you just pick up like a bit of incidental music and you're like, oh, what's that? And then you go hunting. But yeah, very, very true. Uh, Graven says, are you guys going to make a Halloween vegan treats and meal clog? I'm assuming she means vlog because a clog is a very different thing. Um, not so, not so much, no, only because, uh, Graven, we, it's not a big thing here like it is in the States, Halloween. It just isn't. It never has been. It's getting I, a bit more, but... Yeah, but that's because this country's becoming really Americanised. Yeah. It's like, it never was a thing over here. We, we might have gone out as kids and, uh, no, that, that, that were bonfire. Yeah. We call my cup of cola. That's bonfire night, bonfire yeah. night. It's not even like it's 10 percent of what it is in the States. It's is just it? not a big thing over here no. at, at all. But we are doing a Halloween themed quiz the night before of the Friday. And you never know, we might have some Halloween snacks there. Who knows? You Who knows? Know. Who knows? But yeah, fair question. Fair question. Um, I think Josh Guy asked um, whether we like horror films. Love yes, them. absolutely. Favourite genre. Yeah, uh, horror. In fact, one of my favourite movies of all time is the 2004 remake of Dawn of the Dead. I cannot get enough of that movie. Oh, Louise. It's got everything I love about it. About it. It's, got, it's a brilliant zombie movie. Mm. It lulls you into a false sense of security at the start, and, and then you're like, what? And then the film starts. I'll never forget that. When first watching it, I was like, and then it said Dawn of the Dead, and I was like, it's only just started. Oh, my God. Running zombies and a strong female lead. Big thing of mine. Love, love strong female lead characters. Find them easier to see it through their eyes. Because I like to be a character in a movie. Do you know what I mean? I, I always see it through the eyes of somebody. The only f movie, in fact... Where I'm exactly even is Night Mother. Oh, okay, yeah. Where I see it through both. Yeah, 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 yeah. Leanne's in desperate need of a brew. No question, just, you know, Imran. Come on, let's not uh, have a repeat of last time. Leanne's a very busy lady. She's helping us out here tremendously. Uh, so a cup of tea or whatever the, uh, the chosen beverage for the lovely lady. <laughs> That's what the desert dessert dessert, dessert please. please put you in for crap desserts custody. I'm here all week, Thanks. busting out the dad jokes today, Imran. <laughs> Thick and fast. Oh, that yeah. jumped. Did a little bit, didn't it? That uh, fastly. Okay, okay. Not too bad. Uh, Mr. Atlanta asks, how long ago did you meet? 23 years, and there's a vlog. There's always a vlog. There's a vlog that we did on our anniversary this year, uh, because we'd been married for 12 year, uh, 11 years, and we'd been together for 23 years, so we did a special vlog. And if you search 23 years on our channel... You'll see the vlog. It was lovely, actually. It was just a chance to show some old pictures. It was really nice. Reminisce, talk about how we met, how, you know. All that stuff. And why we work. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, random question from Limbit. What is your favourite Beatles song? That's a difficult one. But I, I quite like some of the really early stuff. Um, you know, like um, Ticket to Ride, Eight Days a Week. All that stuff, but then you know, like slow, slow one like uh, yesterday. That's gorgeous as well. Yeah, and it's a funny one as well because it's like, what's your favourite Beatles song? What sung by the Beatles? You get me? Because so many people have covered like the Carpenters version of "We've Only Just Begun." Ah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was a bit slow on the uptake then. Yeah, 
she did she did loads of um, Beatles covers. Yeah, 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 at yeah. The start and some of them are brilliant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an interesting point. Actually, it's like sometimes. Oh, hang on, we've only just begun. Was that be what song did you mention a minute ago? Uh, ticket to Ride and Eight Days a Week. Yeah, Ticket to Ride. She she's covered that. We got a ticket to yeah yeah yeah. I remember the Carpenters version of that. Yeah, it's gorgeous. We got Slower. a ticket to ride. We got a ticket to ride, but she don't care. Did they change and it? he don't care. Much slower than Captain's version. Care. Uh, Carol Mullen, do you take a multivitamin? Yes. We do. You'll see it on our What We Eat in a Day vlog that we put up just yesterday, I think it was. But we take the one from uh, Holland and Barrett. It is here that vegan, multivitamin, and mineral. And they're often on. Um, Two for one. So very good. However, a lot of people rave about Veg One from the Vegan Society. Uh, and we've got them linked in our Amazon store from Amazon. Uh, yeah, Kelly, this may be controversial, but I don't like pumpkin. Don't like the smell or taste of it. You know what? I don't think I've eaten enough pumpkin to, to actually formulate an opinion. I'd to love be honest. to try pumpkin pie. Yeah. That's a sweet, isn't it? Yeah. But I, I might end up making the version, you know, similar nutrition. Um, Derek and Crystal, they did one the other, like sweet potato pie, but with the same same kind of, um, exactly the same method as a pumpkin pie. It looked gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I know. I know it's a Thanksgiving thing in America. But I love sweet things like that. Maybe. Yeah, totally. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Beverly, thank you for joining us. Beverly, shooting off. Have to go cooking dinner. Love you all. Take care, my darling. See you again soon. Uh, Leanne says, fast zombies, no thanks. <laughs> That's why I loved the 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 film. That's why I, I adored it, because I was like, what's this running? Why are you running all of a sudden? Running, running, there's something great about it, though, because it just adds an extra well, level Well, it scares you more because those zombies... Uh, uh, then, you just, like, move. You just literally need a long stick and you sorted. Move. As we've seen in, uh, you know, The Walking Dead and what other such it? shows. Uh, John Ross... Who do I need to call slash sleep with to get the vegan queens to perform in Glasgow? Do I start a petition, chain myself to the train tracks at Queen Street? End COVID. Simple. And then we'll get loads of bookings up there. Simple, mate. Yeah. John, they've not done a booking this year. It's shite. Everything got cancelled. It's shite. They were, they were booked from April to September. Gigs every month. And a residency, which is like, you know, we have we have mentioned it before and we try not to talk about it too much because deep down it's really horrible. It's But we know that it's impacted so many people in the arts and entertainment industry. Um, we've got friends all over the world that have been heavily impacted. Yeah, yeah. And you can't kind of, I mean, it's so easy to, to wallow to wallow and be like, oh, we've worked so hard for two years, we were just getting our name out there, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And the next guy, and the next girl, and the makeup girl, and the guy that plays the horn in, in that band, and the and the dancer. True, in it? Really is. We've all been affected. Um, so Kelly, whilst we're on that subject, uh, Kelly says, when are the Vegan Queens next? Uh, doing a live or recording a video? Uh, I think they'll be recording this coming Thursday. Yes, they will. And it, it shall be up and it shall be an episode of Back to Ladies of Lockdown. Uh, where, but they'll no doubt plan their next live then, I should imagine. Yes, I'm just checking we've not missed anything, just having a quick scroll back up, which I think we've covered most things. Lots of people weighing in on the pumpkin debacle. Are you planning any Christmas cooking, cooking vlogs? Yes, definitely. Uh, we've already got quite a few on the channel, though. Check out our festive plat, Hannah, 
give our channel a search for our festive plat video. It's fabulous. Definitely. If you in fact, if you just type the word festive, all our festive taste tests and our festive cooking vlogs will come up. I should imagine. Uh, yes. So truly, Anne, the impact on the arts has been devastating. It really has. Um, should we, just to kind of round this off, mm -hmm. because this will have cooled a little bit now, should we have a little tasting? Oh, a little taste test before we wrap things up for the afternoon? That'd be nice, wouldn't it? It's still bubbling, man. I'll try a bit. It's still bubbling. My, my mouth's asbestos mouth now after those uh, that naughty vegan taste test. Can you see it bubbling? It is very hot, isn't it? Well, I'll just take a little corner out. <clears throat> Looks like it's quite wet as well. I'm not complaining about that. No? I'm just going to be really careful with this so I don't I don't damage myself. Jason, again. Just, just wait five minutes before you go anywhere near it. That's all I'm saying. We'll get it out. <laughs> nice. Denise says, when I was a child, you couldn't buy pumpkins, so we used to carve a big swede for a lantern, and the smell was awful when lit. <laughs> That's brilliant, Denise. That is brilliant. Imagine it'd be harder to um, to carve a swede. I quite liked how you read that as well, though, Jess. Yeah. You can, you, I don't know if you can see it or not. I mean, it's steaming. Well, it's still steaming. Oh, oh, the oh, going oh, again. Uh, I'm going to do something about this. I'm going to modify it. Yeah. Oh, there, there, there. Yeah, we're okay. It's not in focus necessarily, but you can see. Oh, it's fine. Can't you? It's fine. You can see it, can't you? But I can dream. <laughs> Can't I? Oh, actually, you know what? The pot situation is not as bad as I thought it was. I've, I've been very kind. By doing what? Cleaning up as I went. Clean as I went along. Clean as you go! <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Atlanta, for pointing that out. Yes. Give us a like. Oh, that's delicious. We're heading up towards um, we're heading up towards two hours of live streaming, and pretty consistently right from the start, we've had uh, well, ten minutes in, we've pretty much sat at around a hundred. We're now one hundred and forty-two. Um, give us a thumbs up; it really would mean a lot. And uh, if, in case we forget to say it at the end, um, now and again, tell someone about us if you think they might enjoy the content and the down to earth veganism. How could I make that more festive? Is it okay? Mm. Yeah, as in ideas, guys. How could you make this more festive? What could you put in the sauce to festivise it a little bit? Easy. Cranberries. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously not. I live with a wrong one. <laughs> it's gorgeous. You could put a cracker on the side of the Parsley. plate. Parsley. Parsley? Yeah. Yeah, because then you've got on your Christmas dinner, if you do parsley with this, like I said before, carrots and thyme, sprouts and sage, roast potatoes and rosemary, dolphin whack potatoes, and parsley. Parsley, sage, rosemary and thyme. Kelly says nutmeg. Oh, you filthy, filthy girl. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is even better than the last one. I know. Is that that uh, apple cider vinegar, do you think? Oh, no, that was the cheese sauce, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's the apple cider vinegar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going home, me. Put my coat on and I'm going home. I'm already home. It's beautiful. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. I didn't want to do it, but I kind of do. I don't want to just do that. Off the top. Mm. Yeah. That's delicious, man. 
Dan Kono's got the right idea. I can't believe I didn't think of it. Oh. How to make it more festive. Pickled onions. <laughs> Absolutely spot on. Pickled onions in it and on the side of it. Little little miniature ones. I give up if you want. Oh, Deneen, you're going to have to just go back to the start and watch it all over. Because it's well worth it. We've had shenanigans, questions, comments, tasting, cooking. An argument and a sulk. <laughs> <That's messy. laughs> Do you know we never argue at Christmas? I don't remember arguing at Christmas. We never have. I think we'd just I think we'd just kibosh it, wouldn't we? We're very Yeah. We'd just be like, no, we're not doing this. Imagine we don't argue. Rarely. Hardly at all. Rarely. We have silly little disagreements. <laughs> Where we call each other a dick and then we move on. Yeah. Sometimes a div. Which is a northernism, I think. Um I'm gonna do I, I've noticed by the way there's a huge thing going around about tray bakes at the moment. Everyone's gone crazy for tray bakes. Mind you, it's the equivalent, it's the roasted equivalent, it's the oven equivalent of a one pot meal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um yeah. so I'm gonna do one soon. With sausages and taters and other vegetables. You want to do a tray bake? <sighs> you really like it, don't you? It's really tasty. Yeah. So as somebody, um, I can't remember who it was, somebody asked him that the last time we did a cooking live, this is not our, um, this is not our dinner. Or lunch for that matter. It's not a meal. It's simply just a lovely it's little a side. It's a side. It's yeah. a side dish. I mean, particularly, you know, it's, I don't know what we'll have it with, but we'll have it as a side dish. Um, and I think, I do think I'm going to do it for, well, let me think. No, I will do it for Christmas Day. I'm just wondering whether I'd have enough room in the oven. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The log was on in the oven on the, in the, oven on Christmas Day. Uh, right. We should start... Um, Yeah, we should wind things up. Yeah, really. start, start bringing this to a uh, close. Um, hopefully right. it's been helpful. We've shown you how to make a uh, vegetable-based cheese-style sauce um, that is fabulous as a hot sauce with pasta, but also really good when it's gone cool as like a cheese spread for sandwiches and wraps and all that kind of thing. Uh, we've shown you how to make... a Potato dough and wise just sat eating it all, noshing it up. What is left me? Scraps. I'm just sat here watching me. Saw what I was doing. Didn't intervene. Yeah, so as Paul said, really hope you've enjoyed the live this afternoon. Um, we know we have. It's helped keep us sane uh, or a level of sanity over the last few months. So thank you for coming along, joining us, being part of this wonderful, ever-expanding, growing community. Um, give us a thumbs up on your way out. Um, it would be massively appreciated, as we've said. Yes, thank you to our wonderful moderators uh, for helping us to keep things in check today. Mm -hmm. Thank you to all our Patreons and our channel members for supporting us and keeping this going. Um, thank you to everyone who's watched. Thank you. Just thank you to you all. You're yeah. all wonderful. And now we've got potato doff and wax wag with our tea and cheese sauce to do with pasta tomorrow, I think. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. So lovely. Thanks, guys. So much for watching. Um, you ready to say goodbye? I believe so. I've got a, a little space inside of my belly here that's got lovely potato in it. And I'm very happy about that. Love you, mister. Love you. Mwah. Love you a lot. Thank you so much for watching, folks. We'll see you again very soon. Don't forget, um, I'll, I'll share in a community post uh, either Matt's video from tonight, 8 o'clock live music. We'll be there having a chat as well. Um, uh, or I'll just share his channel. Uh, pop along if you get a chance. And follow everybody in the chat. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thanks so much. Uh, we'll see you again very soon. Until then, please be excellent to yourselves and each other. Bye, love. Bye. Bye, love.